get back to Earth. Good morning, Mr. I'm a Brenner. simple farmer Good morning, sir. in the Imperial Valley. It just happens to be 400 miles wide. That's all. Good morning. My papa, Good morning. from whom I learned the business, told me years ago when I started out, Salvatore, to be a successful, you gotta know two things. Who buys her or who sells her your crop and the weather. Well, we got her the water down in our valley. That takes care of the weather. Now oh, let's get Very serious for a moment. This is important. Your secretary was kind enough to provide this tape. Of course, I have a warrant for it. You told a lot of lies, sir. Of course, most of them can be explained in your capacity as a spy, but not the big one. Not your whereabouts at the time of the murder. What strikes you about this picture? The T-33 Silver Star. I see that you visited with me again in my absence. I have a warrant for that, too, sir. You have a warrant for everything. What strikes you about that picture? I was younger and more beautiful then. Not that it was taken 15 years ago in Korea. Not the fact that at that time your hairline is receding. How stupid of me. What strikes me, sir, looking at you now 15 years later, is that you now have a healthy crop of hair. Luxuriant. I wear a piece, a hair piece. That's what I told the art guy down at headquarters. I said, figure this fella to be bald. And working on that assumption, sir, he took an airbrush and he removed all your hair. This is the same picture. Removed all of it? Yes. And then he put on a wig and he added a mustache and a beard and some glasses. Ah! Uh, Steinmetz! <laughs> oh, dear old friend, Mr. Steinmetz. That's marvelous. Very clever fellows you've got. It's really wonderful. I want you to hear the tape. Yes, I'll hear it. By all means, go ahead. It's terrific. Pay strict attention to the early part. Speech for Mr. DeFonte to be delivered before the commodity broker's lunch. Right here. That sound. That sound, sir, is the closing of Venetian blinds. That's the sound. So I close the blinds. What's so special about that? That direction is east. Please don't give me a lesson in geography. At five minutes past six, the sun came up. An hour or so later, give or take a few moments, the sun angles into the building in this direction, and it hits right here at your desk. You came in the following morning, sir, to finish your speech. And you sat down. And when you started to dictate, the early morning sun got in your eyes. And you then arose, went to the window, and closed the blinds. Let me see. I closed the blinds for privacy. But you're on the third floor, sir. Yeah. Why would you require privacy? Oh, there are other buildings in the neighborhood, higher buildings. But they're all office buildings, sir. There's no one in them at night. But this is an office building. I was in it at night. Why should not other people be in their offices? Why don't you play the tape, carry on from there, and you will see that, in fact, it had to be night. Any particular section, sir? Right on, from there. Now you listen very carefully. First of all, I'd like to thank the officers of your association for inviting me here. It seems like only yesterday I was crushing the grapes in my father's vineyard. If you don't believe me, I'll show you the bottom of my feet. One foot still has a cabernet stain, and the Did other... Did you hear that? 
Yes, sir, I heard it. You heard the chimes? These guys I did. Were did you count them? You yes, sir, there are 11. 11? So it had to be 11 o'clock at night. It could not have been 11 o'clock in the morning. You can check with my secretary. No, sir, it couldn't have been at night. Couldn't have been night. It's gonna be all right. There's a food shortage all over it the world. There's no reason for the price to fall. Look at Southeast Asia. They need our crops more than ever now because of the tragic events there in the past 10 years. This extra demand for our extra supply is gonna make for a proper marriage in the marketplace. And if you're worried about the Chinese, don't be. They may pull out of the Olympics, but not out of the soybeans. You lost me again, Mr. Colombo. I did some checking. Newspapers, wire services, TV newsrooms. I checked everywhere. And I ended up calling the Peking News Bureau. Did you? And at 6.20 a.m. on the morning of the DeFonte speech, six hours and 20 minutes past midnight, seven hours and 20 minutes past the time that you claimed that you were writing this speech, and to the shock of the world, the Chinese pulled out of the Olympics. Did they? You couldn't have written that speech the night before. There's no way in the world it hadn't happened yet. What made you stay on it? Was it the, uh, was it the coat? Yes, sir, I couldn't figure out why it was removed. You see, the I know that a mugger can take a guy's money without taking off his coat. And then it occurred to me that Mr. Henderson was a secret agent. And that secret agents wear gun. Shoulder holsters. And that Mr. Henderson... Had what? Was a secret agent. He was. And you couldn't afford to have that fact known. So in order to remove a shoulder holster... I had to... Remove, remove the coat. coat. Why didn't you put it back on again? No, oh, I was going to. But apart from muggers on the beach, Mr. Colombo, they also have loving couples. And I was interrupted at the scene of the crime. Would you like to hear something funny? I'd love to. Today, the Chinese, they changed their minds. Did they again? They're back in the games. In the games? Mahjong. Mahjong. Just one more thing. 